Hello and welcome to another trades training video. I'm Joe Carswell and this lesson is one in a series. In this lesson, we're going to cover wall framing connections. Let's get right into it. So let me set this up. In this lesson, we are going to be using some models and some scaled lumber. All of this will help me uh, illustrate this in camera for you. We're talking about large walls, a large building, and this scaled lumber is 25% of actual size it means we can get a lot more squeezed into this frame. And this represents a two by six board. It's probably eight feet long, uh, this particular one. And you'll see these even in, we have a, a model of a small building over here that'll come into the video as well. Let's start wall connections off by talking about corners. When we have wall panels, which I've got a couple here modeled, we need to make corner connections. We can build wall panels all day, but we have to connect them. So we'll bring our wall panels together in a 90 degree corner, happens all the time. We have three things to consider when connecting these walls in a corner. One is going to be at the bottom. We need to make this connection here. That's the easy part. Our, our bottom plates are easily connected to a concrete slab using bolts. That's the common way to do it. Or if it's a wood deck, we will nail this down frequently. So the bottom connection is always sturdy based on this idea of platform framing. We're always connecting these to a deck. The next thing to worry about is this top connection. So we have no really good way to connect these walls at the top corner the way that they are. We have to add something. We're going to use a double top plate to make this happen. I want to show you that, but let me go ahead and clamp these walls in place so I'm not having to hold them. Before we get into this top connection, there's a couple of terms I need to go over to understand how this works. When you bring two walls together, you're always going to have what's called a through wall, which is this one, and a butt wall. Your through wall is going to carry through this wall width to the outside of it. And then you're going to have a butt wall. The butt wall carries directly into your through wall. You have to identify those to then consider how to connect your top plates. So once you've figured out which is your through wall and your butt wall, you're going to start with your cap plate on your butt wall. This cap plate makes this a double top plate. It will extend over our through wall and carry to the outside of it. So what we've done here is created this overlap, which we can then connect uh, above here to make a solid connection here. That plus a cap plate filled in on this side will level out this whole area. We can then build on top of it, add another uh, floor deck, a second story, a roof, whatever. So let's do a quick review of this again. It's really important. You're going to start with a through wall that carries through to the outside corner. You're going to have a butt wall that dead ends into that through wall. You're going to take a cap plate on the butt wall that extends or overlaps over your through wall. That's where we'll make this connection of these two walls. We'll then add a cap plate to level out our through wall all the way around. So that takes care of the bottom and top connections. Let's talk about what happens in the middle. I've got some mock-ups for that. Hi, sorry for the interruption. I had a quick message for you. First of all, thanks for tuning in to our Corners and Connections lesson. We offer a lot of other lessons at our learning portal, which is tradeskillsu.com. If you're a teacher and you've found us here, we have a ton of other resources to help you with your students teach them construction in a digital environment. You can find those at teachconstruction.org. Once again, thanks for watching. Let's get back to the video. These examples are uh, sort of cutaways or details of what a framed or two frame walls would look like as they come together. What you see here is what happens when you bring a butt wall into a through wall and you're seeing it from above here. It's basically a detail or a cutaway. The uh, outside corners here, as you can see, you have plenty of material to fasten to. And the big uh, concern about the inside of the wall here is we need surfaces to fasten materials to. There's materials that have to happen here later, whether it's drywall or OSB for sheathing on the outside. We have to always consider that nailing surface. Never a problem on the outside of the corner. 
have plenty of surface here and here to fasten to. The problem comes in on the inside here. And even on the inside of this wall, we have no problem. But look what happens over here. So I've got some materials here I'll lay in place. Perfect uh, surface to connect to, fasten, no problem. Look what happens over here. I've got nothing to fasten my materials to. This is a consideration we have to make for every inside corner. So we have to add something in here to fasten our materials. As you can see, this is begging for something to connect to here. So we need to add parts. So here we have a mock-up of a corner connection with a nailer added. And this goes by different names. You might hear it called a three stud corner. Basically, it has a board that's turned sideways in the through wall that extends out. And what this does is create this inside surface to nail to. So if we have our drywall here, we also have a space or surface on this side to fasten our drywall to as well. So this corner becomes successful when other trades need to come in and add materials. It's really important that this part doesn't get left out. So this brings up an important point about corners and how framing is evolving. What we have here is instead of placing this board like a stud and uh, in the direction of all the other studs, if you turn it sideways, you're creating a void in here in the wall that you can access from the inside. The reality of framing is, is that you're going to sheathe this outside surface here when you dry the house in. The insulation doesn't come in until later. So now we have a place where we can access all the way into the corner here and we can insulate it. That's gonna create an energy efficient corner. And that's another name you might hear this called, a California corner and energy efficient corner. So just by turning that uh, nailer sideways, we provided that access that's really important later on. So I talked about this stud being turned sideways in this through wall. Let's look at this other one and see what it used to look like when we built this. So here you have this is an old school method of making a corner. You might hear this called a four stud corner. They would have uh, counted them one, two, three, four studs. What this was, was an attempt to push this stud out to make this nailing surface on the inside. And to do that, they would use blocking here. This would uh, fill in or space out an inch and a half and push this stud out so that it would create this nailing surface on the inside. As you can see, these two, they, they, they uh, accomplish the same thing on the inside. You have nailing surface on both sides of the inside corner, but you've done it here with less material. And here's the real problem with this particular arrangement is that when I have my materials, like my sheathing on the outside, we've dried the house in, I have now created a space in the top here that I can no longer insulate. I have no more access to it. What this creates is energy loss in the house at every corner. So not only are we wasting materials, but we've also created cold spots or drafts in the house. We're wasting energy. That is no longer an option, especially in some code. Energy code does not even allow this kind of corner. You'll see it in framing. I see it even being done today, but this is sort of an outdated way to frame. This becomes a much more efficient way for cost, materials, and energy. So this example creates a less expensive, more energy efficient example of a corner connection. We can go even further with that. And if we go back to our original model here, we can add what's called a drywall clip to this configuration say three clips that would travel instead of this nailer would be connected just on the inside of our butt wall here. And those drywall clips will catch the edge of that material, create a surface to fasten them to, and we can finish out that space. The benefits of this arrangement with the clips is not only we're saving money by not having to spend it on lumber, we're also creating more space in here that we can insulate. So we've, even this two by four nailer here is taking up space, valuable space that can be insulated. So this becomes, as far as energy and cost savings, 
becomes an even better corner design. Buildings are not all exterior walls and corners. There's other connections we need to make. Mainly when you're talking about interior walls, a lot of those need to connect to our exterior walls. Those will be made with a sort of a perpendicular connection or a T connection. So this is the kind of situation you'll see where you have an exterior wall and you have an interior wall that's going to come into it or butt into it. This uh, consideration, we need to do some different things here. Same issues we have, we have to connect uh, the bottom and we have to connect the top and we have to deal with the center or the middle part here. The bottom connection, just like our corners, will be made to the existing deck or slab, no problem there. The top connection, we will do similar to our corner. We will use a cap plate to extend over from our interior partition over this exterior wall. And then we can use a, another cap plate here to fill in the gaps and level all this out. So that works just fine. Now we need to deal with what happens in this stud area in here. So let me get this out of the way so we can see a little more of what's going on. What I have here is nothing happening. We need nailing surface just like with our corners. So we're going to put a board in and turn it sideways just like with our energy efficient or three stud corner. And this board will be wider than our partition wall. We'll, uh, that'll add nailing surface. So let's take a look at my mock-up here which will give you even more insight into that. So here you see we have my exterior wall here, same exterior wall. Here is my two by six turned sideways. That is going to meet up with my two by four partition wall here. These get fastened together. And what you end up with, because your two by six is uh, two inches wider than your two by four, you end up with an inch of nailing surface on either side. Now we have a sturdy connection from top to bottom and we also have added this really important inside corner nailing surface. This is not our only option for a T-wall connection. We can also do what is called ladder blocking. I've got some of that on my model here. So what you see going on here is you have a, an exterior wall with a 2x4 T-wall connection to it. And what you see here are uh, pieces of lumber that are run horizontally. They're about two feet spaced apart. They travel from one common stud to the next, and we can fasten this interior wall stud, this end stud, to any one of these ladder blocks. These also work as interior nailing surfaces for materials that will add like drywall. So whether we're talking about a ladder block T-connection or this nailer type T-connection, I would consider both of these energy efficient like our California or three stud corner. Both of them offer access to this space back here to insulate later. That's a good thing. So all of this comes together, whether it's our T-wall connections or our corner connections, and this is how we bring our wall panels together to make a building. And I can't stress enough how important it is for the framer to consider the other trades. All of these things that we're adding are for the drywaller to do their job. It's providing access for the insulator to insulate this building properly. It might even be for trades like plumbing and electrical to have access within bays. So, the framer has to be smart. They have to plan ahead for this building to succeed and all the other trades to do their job. I hope that makes sense. I'll see you in the next lesson.